All right, everybody, welcome back to another Corona Geek. I'm here with Dane, creator of Skater, the skater app for uh, for who? For everybody? Every, uh, iOS and Android, and I know that's not everyone, but uh, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dane, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. So Dane and I met uh, at an after party or a, a, so what do you call it? A social engagement after a, a casual connect. A soiree. A soiree. A soiree. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Uh, and we get to talking about skater and, and um, you kind of turned me on to this idea of having brands in, in your app. Uh, and so I, I, I like that idea. And so I wanted to kind of get you on the, the show and pick your brain. Uh, so if you would, give us an overview of the game and, and sort of uh, maybe let's lead into your background and talk about how you, you know, the game came about, the inspiration for it. But let's start with the, the game overview. Definitely, definitely. So Skater is a fairly authentic uh, or it has elements of authentic, authenticity skateboarding game for mobile phones. Um, it, you know, to, to reference and bounce off things from the past, you know, I guess it's, it's, it's aiming to be some, somewhere what EA Skate was, if, if people are familiar with that. Um, Tony Hawk had been around for a while, people are familiar with skateboarding, but there really was a hole in the market. Um, not the same context here, a totally different world. Mobile is very different. Skateboarding's changed a lot in that time, and it's not the 90s anymore. Um, but... Uh, there definitely was, uh, you know, a couple of years back when we started working on this, um, just a, a, a dearth of uh, a, a real skateboarding games or really anything with any depth to it. Um, n n not to speak ill of uh, Touch Grind, which I really loved, and that was a great game, but that was the only offering back then. Um, and there were a lot of things that Touch Grind didn't touch on, uh, upon. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it really reduced and refined skateboarding down to things that made sense on the touch screen. That was kind of, that was kind of like generation one of mobile skating games. Um, and no one else was doing or seemed to be doing or seemed likely to do, uh, anything that was going to fill that void. Um, and even if they did, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a very, very large global niche. It's the, the biggest action sport by participation. Um, I, I've heard stats like that, that one in two kids that grow up have some form of skateboard in the U S like, uh, so, uh, you know, and it's something that obviously everyone, you know, in the West at least is, is familiar with and has some knowledge of. So yeah, just, it made a lot of sense. And that's, that's our sort of background too. I, I kind of lived and breathed skateboarding growing up and, you know, you kind of live on your board. It's, it's really an identity um, more than just a, a hobby, like a sport you play on the weekends. It's something that you, you dress, you, you talk like it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's just what, it's what you do. It's how you define yourself at that, at that age, uh, growing up. And, and, you know, I still get out and hit the mini now and then. So <laughs> I've completely put it to the side, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so you're marrying your, 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 uh, development skills and with your, your childhood passion sort of thing. Yes. In, in, in a way that, um, I, I know a lot of people sort of try and follow their passion and, and, and that, and I, I know a lot of other people say that's terrible business advice. So I'd say in this case, it's, it's a confluence of, uh, things that I have deep, deep knowledge of, I guess, culturally and, and a connection to, um, overlapping with a skill set, good timing, um, a team, uh, production pipeline, uh, good timing for the platform. And a, and a really, you know, I really tried to not be blinded by my desire to do the project, but to really make a solid business case out of it and really de-risk it. And, and, and that's where we, you know, we'll sort of get into some of the marketing stuff that we've done and, and that it's really about like removing massive points of failure and, and making sure, you know, that the business model has the best chance at um, feeding us and uh, hopefully allowing us to build more things. <laughs> Well, well, let's talk about that for just a moment. I mean, uh, the right now it's a premium app. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it, I think it's in the store for what, like four ninety nine or something. Yes, yes, yeah. And and then, but there's also a, a brands element to it. So there's there's uh, skateboards and there's shoes and things like that that are in the game. So uh, talk talk a little bit about that and what what your what you would like to see. I mean, is that something you would we want to uh, see brands featured in the game, or are they already featured? How does that work? Uh, so currently, we the, the, the game works. People come in, they can skate in um, actual locations that exist in the real world. So 
super famous spots um, that you know many people are sort of familiar with. Hollywood High School. There's there's a big set of stairs and some rails out back. Um, Love Park, Philadelphia, a bunch of skate parks as well. So it's kind of street and park spots. Um, <clears throat> the brands fit into that in uh, in the same way that cars fit into a racing game. You know, it's it's it, it's it's one of those like specific context where uh having branded content actually adds to the product you know as opposed to being like oh let's put a billboard or something in and it's a, it's a kind of subtraction of value um you know it'd be weird to play a car racing game and have like made up car companies and this this game is it's it's just the pair of shoes and the skateboard that you control so you know, it makes sense to have Etnies, to have DC shoes, to have all these board brands that we have in there as well. That's that's something that um, if we didn't have them, kids would request them. And and we still get, you know, I mean, that's the, the most commented thing that, that we get feedback from users is, I really like this brand, you know, why don't you get them in? Or why don't you have this, you know, that kids want it. It's an identity, identity thing again, is within skateboarding, uh, kids pick this sort of, you know, some, some, some brands are a bit more like punk rock. Some are a bit more like street. Uh, so kids identify with those brands and they want to have that in there so they can skate with it and record their clips with it and stuff like that. So yeah, to, to, uh, to, to, to round out on that, um, we, ha we feature brands, they had their product placed in the game. You could skate with it. Um, and we, you know, we sort of work to have more brands bring in new content. We, we do activities with the brands as well, uh, line up marketing activations and, and run contests and stuff like that. And that's something that we've learned a lot from, I think, since we launched um, is how to do that stuff effectively. So how do you, do you, do you have to, uh, I mean, I imagine you would have to pitch these companies directly, right? I mean, you can't just sort of cold call them and, 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 you know, interest them in this game. You've got to yeah. like, see the product, right? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's an interesting industry to try and crack as well. Um, basically most skate brands, uh, exist because uh, a few guys on a skate team, you know, got to a certain age and they're like, we're not going to be riding as pro athletes forever. Let's start a brand. So you got a bunch of guys that were traveling the country, you know, uh, smoking, smoking and drinking and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of living, living a pretty, pretty uh, chilled lifestyle, <laughs> partying a lot and stuff. And then, you know, they start a company, um, but they you know, they're, there's a whole spectrum from, uh, you know, ones that are, uh, uh, have publicly owned, uh, uh, publicly listed uh, parent companies, and they have a lot of structure in them, uh, down to these sort of skater owned, pretty relaxed, but, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to figure out how to how to talk about you know contracts and negotiate terms and stuff like that that's not how they work for some of these guys so and uh, you, you've really got to kind of you know make friends with the right people come at it from the right angle and and it, it did take some time to uh yeah make headway uh, that's, on, that's interesting because i i right out right off the bat i i envision the, you know big um, ivory tower sort of stuff where you go in and you have to like figure out, uh, you know, like you're kind of like trying to get in the door, right. Past the gatekeeper and stuff like that. But you're saying, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's a little more chill than that. And you got to figure out like be, be friends with them and figure out who to talk to. Yeah. And that's like legitimacy is a big part of it as well. You know, like, um, it's, it's, it's like dealing with like rock bands or something. The rock bands didn't have managers, <laughs> Um, so you've, you've got to, yeah, you've got to kind of be someone that doesn't look like they're, they're coming in to, to take advantage of, of skateboarding because it's really just a big, it's a big family of, of people that, um, have this lifestyle and they have businesses built around those lifestyles, but they're really kind of living it. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, a hundred percent commercial endeavor for them it's it's it, it really is an extension of that thing like they all grew up doing it they all started at the, at the bottom and they made their way up to, to where they were athletes and they got onto a team and uh, across that world and be able to be a part of that a little bit as well 
Well, let's talk about the tech end of it for, for just a moment then. Uh, you've got, um, you know, you've got all these different parks and all these different skating locations. Uh, you've got all of these different shoes that you, you swap out and, and things like that, uh, mm-hmm. and boards and whatnot. So what, what was your biggest challenge uh, putting this all together? Man, all of it. <laughs> Literally all of it. Um, I don't know if there's any one particular thing that, that, that I'd single out. The, uh, the, 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 the physics was uh, hard. The, the, the graphics, the getting, getting it running on device as well. Um, the brand stuff was, was a, you know, a two year journey. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think obviously leading up to launch the, the crunch was, was brutal, uh, as, as well. So getting that first release out, I, I think there's a tendency in, 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 in people, maybe in guys to, to just slog through something that's difficult. Um, I, I maybe have a little of a t- tendency to do that versus, trying to make things easier for the sake of it would probably lead to a better outcome. You know, if you're just pushing through and you're like, you know, think things start to fall apart a little bit. And I think that, uh, that launch that, that we pushed out, um, you know, we lined up a bunch of things. It's amazing what got, what got done for that launch. Um, I'm making it sound like we launched a triple A, you know, <laughs> it was like, you know, a few guys that got a mobile game out, but um, yeah, it was, it was heavy. And I, I think if, if I really, really looked at it and applied Pareto's principle, uh, there probably are some things like some more fat that I could have sliced out that would have made everyone's lives easier. You, you know, and I, I thought we'd been brutal with uh, constraining scope, with cutting out things that weren't necessary, with focusing on high value, uh, you know, just the things we could get the most leverage out of. But um, yeah, there's probably a bunch of things we could have trimmed down even more. And, and that's where, that's where so many, um, you know, indies fail, particularly people that haven't been through that journey a bunch of times is yes, yeah, scope creep and just being overwhelmed and biting off more than anyone could chew. You know? In terms of future, uh, future plans, what, where are you headed? Where, where's the product going? I mean, are you, what do you, what do you have in the wings? Uh, more, uh, you know, what I think, I think you learn from everything that, that, that goes out, um, as far as the, the gameplay, I think there's a lot of things we can refine. I, I, I really feel like we've, we've got this thing out there that is, uh, like version one of the experience. And I think we could go back and refresh and get, you know, an, an order of magnitude, on fun, on engagement, on all those things. I think, I think we can take these pieces that all this work has been put into and we've gotten so far, but it's, you know, it's always that last little few percent that creates the polish. And it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's the product it could be, but I think as far as work-wise and investment, it's 90% has been put in. So we put another six months into to making it, tweaking some things, rebuilding a few systems and refining, I, I think it could really be really awesome. And that's one of the luxuries I think we have with a product like this is that, you know, the, it, it has a very long tail on it. You know, we still get daily downloads. It's not something that, you know, you get your press burst at the start and then it just fades into obscurity. Um, you know, it's skateboarding and we, we're ranking for a bunch of the keywords. Like we have uh, organic discovery uh f- for this product and and you know other ways to market it so um we can keep keep uh keep it alive for, for a lot longer than you know other casual games <laughs> so, so let's let's uh let's uh give people a, a way that they can follow uh and get updates and also tell them where they can get the app yeah, for sure. Um, updates, we tend to put, uh, it's more like a kind of dev diary, I guess, on Instagram. If you go to at skater.app on Instagram, um, we post sort of updates about development. We communicate with the audience there. So, you know, it's, and we run contests and stuff. Um, the app itself, you can check, check out at skaterapp.com or on Android, iOS, just search for skater. We should be the top 10. (laughs) 
Excellent. Well, I tell you what, I, I loved uh, the fact that when I went to the website skaterapp.com, I could put in my phone number and it would text me a link and that just made it that much easier to find the app, even though I'm sure it's super simple to find in the app store. It was just, it just made it that much, um, you know, more direct to get it right on my phone and get started. So that was, that was a lot of fun. So uh, Dana, I appreciate it. You're doing great work, man. I, I, I just, I'm fascinated by the idea of putting brands into uh, an app and the fact that you've done it around uh, the skate uh, culture is phenomenal. I love it. It's a great concept. <laughs> Great, great. Thanks for talking. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's always fun to, to do podcasts. I, I, I just like want to share with you as well that, that since making this game, I've had the chance to catch up with the guys that made EA Skate. And that apparently, I, I thought, you know, I'm just this guy trying to make this thing happen. I'm probably doing everything wrong. But speaking to them, I heard that they had exactly the same problems trying to corral skateboarding and get them all on board with this game. So... Um, that was kind of uh, validating uh, for me to know that the struggle is real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep up the good fight. Thanks so much, Charles. Cheers. <laughs>